Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I will be doing the largest, most ambitious paint job I've ever attempted. Okay, that's clearly not true, you caught me. You are very astute, but this video was made public on April 1st, therefore I'm very funny. Anyway, this itty bitty Universal Carrier is a 285th scale model from 2D6 Wargaming, the company that makes the Emu War game, which I've not shown on this channel, but I do have it. It turns out they make a lot of cool stuff, and this Universal Carrier was probably less than $2, so I figured, why not? Get to painting! As usual, I've primed the model, though it didn't really seem worth setting up the spray booth, so I brush primed it using SMS Black Surfacer. It seems to work just fine, though there is a couple of shiny bits showing through. Let's not worry too much about those. I then apply the base coat. For this I'm using SCC number 15 Olive Drab. The particular version of that colour is from Hataka's Blue Line, which is formulated for brush painting. It seems to work pretty well. I'm not especially interested in debates around exactly what colour to use for SCC-15, but this one looks nice, so I've used it. After spending hours and hours getting the base coat onto this gargantuan model, I dry brushed a highlight using a mix of roughly two parts of the olive drab, with one part for Leho model colour ivory. I apply this mostly to the upper surfaces of the model, the idea being to represent both light hitting it from above and a bit of faded paint. There are no decals, and no way am I going to try hand painting markings at this scale, and it didn't seem worth doing any chipping, so I move right on to painting the road wheels. At first I tried Ammo by MIG rubber tyres, which is usually a good colour for this, but in this case it just didn't seem dark enough and I could barely see it against the green. I figured using a darker colour was in order. I used Vallejo model colour dark grey, which is a bit darker, obviously. Clearly the rubber area on the wheels is very small, so using a wheelie small brush and taking your time is the way to go here. Don't forget the spare road wheel at the front. The grey still doesn't stand out a whole lot, though that's okay. It is a military vehicle, I don't think it wants to stand out. Next, tracks. I'm using rust tracks from Ammo by MIG here. The tracks are pretty easy to see, so even though the model is tiny, you will still want to go slowly and carefully, this isn't too difficult. You just paint where the tracks are, and don't paint where the tracks are not. Oh sound advice old chap! I did accidentally get a little bit of the rust colour onto one of the return rollers, but you can just touch that kind of thing up later. I used the grey colour to do it. As is often the case, at least in my opinion, this colour, while it is nice, looks a bit too bright and rusty. So I darken it down with a wash consisting of roughly 50% army paint a dark tone and 50% water. This is intended for the tracks, but I also got it on the wheels, and that's fine. It'll help add some shadow and impart a slightly dirty look without going too overboard with weathering. Then I figured, why not paint the crew figures? This definitely counts towards my goal of making six figures this year. I applied Ammo by MIG Warm Skin Tone to the faces, and I'm being very careful with this. I don't want to get this on the hull, mostly because I don't want to do any corrections. Painting faces on a model like this, even in a simplified fashion, is a bit extra, as the kids would say. It is a tabletop gaming piece the size of a fingernail, so this probably won't be visible on the gaming table, but I figured why not, it's for my own enjoyment. The result here is a bit messy, but at least the mess is confined to the hats. Can't leave that there though, so I painted the hats with Vallejo model colour English uniform. Is this the correct colour? Probably not. I wanted the hats to be a significantly different colour to the hull so they would stand out. I did also add a touch of this colour to the crew's shoulders. It's pretty much not visible though. I also painted the roll at the rear with English uniform, again so that it would stand out against the hull colour. There's a couple of small boxes in the passenger area, or fighting compartment or whatever you would call it, and I figured why not paint those. I used model colour mahogany brown. I have no idea what they are other than little brown boxes. It just adds a bit of interest. I then painted the MG black with Vallejo model colour black. I figured this probably wasn't really worth putting in the kind of effort you might with a larger kit with highlights and shading and whatnot. As long as it's not the same colour as the hull, it should read as an MG at arm's length. I then applied a wash with army paint a strong tone. First I put this undiluted into the driver's area. Not too much, just enough to make it look like it has some depth. 
then I thinned it out to about two parts water to one part strong tone and put it all over the entire vehicle. The idea being to darken things down, especially in gaps and along edges, and make things look a bit dirty. Be sure to use an appropriately sized brush for these huge surfaces. I then applied a coat of matte varnish, and that's it. One incredibly tiny universal carrier painted, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks cool. That is, if you can see it. It's so tiny, which does make things a bit challenging to paint, though it also makes things a bit easier to paint. At this scale, a lot of things are just not visible, so you don't have to paint them. I mean, how do you paint something that's not visible? Obviously this is not a very fancy paint job, though I would consider it slightly more than a basic tabletop paint job, and tabletop gaming is what this is intended for, though I probably won't ever actually game with it, I just did this for fun. It, unsurprisingly, didn't take very long, and it was pretty fun, though trying to paint the rubber tyres was a little bit annoying. I can definitely see the appeal of tiny models like this. If you're into war games with big distances and maybe swarms of tanks, I guess, this kind of thing is probably for you. And even if you're not into war gaming, you might find this a fun little challenge. Anyway, I'm certainly getting into waffling territory, and there's not a whole lot to say about this anyway. I had fun, I think the result is good, and I had a sensible chuckle lying about painting something huge. What more could you want? If you're interested, you can find a list of the paints I've used in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to see more painting videos, consider sharing this one with people who might be interested. Subscribe if you want, and if you really like what I do, consider supporting on Patreon or Coffee if you're able. Links are in the description. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.